Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Show It Better, the best place to learn architectural representation. This is going to be a series of videos for the architecture plan, how to make an architecture plan. So in this video, we're going to see how to export everything from SketchUp and then uh, prepare the whole base and the whole textures to make the plan. So first we go to SketchUp, open our SketchUp file. Needless to say that it really works if you have a really detailed file. What we're going to do is work with a plan that shows its interiors and exteriors. So it would work if you have uh, things inside and things outside, you know? As soon as you open the SketchUp file, what you're going to do is going to go to view and add cinematic mode. You're not going to have it in perspective, but add cinematic mode. So that way um, it's going to look like more of a plan. And once you have it in add cinematic mode, you're going to go to the section tool. We're going to make a horizontal section and you are going to move the section up or down until you see it, that it's going to represent it in the best way. What do I mean by this? that um, the walls are going to get cut about a meter 50 that you're going to be able to see the doors the windows everything and it's going to be a very clear drawing you don't want to cut it anywhere and just like you know near the roof or you have you want to cut it where the plane is going to be interesting and there's going to be a lot to see once you have this you can right click over the section and uh, press align view or you can go to your views and select the top view and last we are going to go to styles and go to hidden line we don't want the the colors because the, all the colors and everything we're going to put in photoshop so what we're going to do is export various pdfs and jpegs and pngs and then we're going to unite them all in sketchup so in this model i have everything separated so i'm going to export first a version of everything together then i'm going to export only the architecture then only the context and finally only the shadows so take into account uh, the size of your plan that you want it to be for this occasion i'm not going to do it in scale but if you do want to do it in scale you may want to know with precision what the size is going to be and maybe have a reference point so you can scale it up so what we're going to do is go to file click export and export 2d graphic we're going to select the pdf option then we're going to select in meters how big the the export is going to be i exported it around 60 centimeters so it's relatively big and it has a really good resolution this is really important we're still going to import it to illustrator before photoshop so then you can change it but it's it's better if you change it right now once we export the shadows the architecture the context and the whole thing together we're going to open illustrator when we open illustrator you're going to import each pdf separately then you're going to look for any line and normally all of these lines are going to have this, the same stroke width for example this has one point of stroke width you're going to select one of those lines go to select go to the select option select all the same with stroke width and all of the lines are going to be selected or you can just you know click and drag over the whole canvas and everything is going to be selected once you do this you're going to go to the box where it says the stroke width and you're going to type a stroke width that is uh that's the one you want i'm going to go with uh, 0.18 and 0.25 because you know it's going to be very good very visible so that's good for me so i'm going to select that one and click save you're going to close it and do the same for the other other files Once we do this, we're going to first import the context and the architecture into Photoshop and we're going to press OK. Then we're going to import each PDF into the file. As soon as we import, you want to press shift on your keyboard so it, so it centers the image that you're going to import. Nonetheless, you may have problems and the placement might not be exact. So you can do two you can do two things you can select a reference point and like for example the corner of a building the center of that reference reference point and scale it up or you can just start moving the start moving the image that is misplaced and start scaling it up to be as precise as possible once you have this we are going to group them all in one folder and have their respective names so this can be very ordered 
We are also going to add a background layer filled with, with the color white and we're going to lock it just so we can see better our, our canvas. What we're going to do is look for a grass texture that is basically like an aerial view. If you have a Google Earth picture of your site, it would, it would work as well. It would work much better as a matter of fact. If you don't, you can search for grass texture on the internet, on Google, and find one that is very high resolution and doesn't have as much contrast. We don't want this to take all of our attention. Once you import it, you're going to scale it down so when you get close to the image, it looks like a relatively logic scale for the grass. Mine was kind of big, but it kind of works. Then you're going to duplicate this. You can hit Control J. You can hit Control J and Control T and move each one to duplicate them all over the canvas. Once you have these duplicated all over the canvas, we're going to merge these layers. We're going to select one, select the last one, select the Shift key, and click and right click and merge layers. Once we have once we have merged the layers we are going to erase the lines that divide them because that could make our image look kind of bad. So we're going to go to the, the stamp tool, the clone tool, or you can press S on your keyboard. And we're going to select the centers of the image and, and paint them with a soft brush that is not very hard where the lines appear. And you're going to do this so when you look at it very very far away and very close you can't see you can't see the lines that were once there we are going to go to our architecture layer where everything there's everything inside a building but there is a clear limit outside we're going to press w for the magic wand tool we're going to press outside of the architecture what that is going to do is select everything but the building if your building has openings or something, it, it is recommended that you do this with the lasso tool. So again, click L on your keyboard and select the whole building. Click Control Shift I. What we want to do is have the selection of the outside of the building and not the inside. Once you have the selection, you're going to go again to the layer that has the grass texture on it, stand on it, and click the mask tool. When you click, click the mask tool, there's going to be a mask that is going to show the grass everywhere except in the areas that have a building. What this is going to do, it's going to do two things. It's going to forever save our selection of everything but the grass. If we ever want to select anything outside or anything inside the building, we can just control click over the mask, control right click over the mask and it's going to appear the selection. And it's going to help us um, paint grass and not let it paint inside the building. So once you have this, you're going to press control G to group that grass layer. On top of that grass layer, you're going to add another mask, right? Once you have that white mask, you can press control I to invert it and everything you're not supposed to see the grass anymore. Once you don't see the grass, what we're going to do is select a default brush. What The one I selected was the ones you have in Photoshop in default, so it's not a very special brush. You just want to make sure it's a brush that has a lot of imperfections because that's what we want the image to feel like. And you're going to scale it down like I did in, in the image. Once you have this, you're going to start painting with the color white around the building with with uh with 50 to 60 percent opacity you're going to start painting around the building this is going to be very soft you want it to cut you know have much attention to it and you're just going to start painting it very softly the more we get to the outside of this painting you're going to reduce the opacity but scale up the brush so it's going to have a nice dissemination the good thing about this process is that it can always be modified since we are using masks and we are not erasing anything or man or, or damaging any layer we can always paint back paint back the grass or paint it another way so for for now we're going to leave it like this now you're going to look in google for for the words aerial view forest or something like that what you, what we want to do what we want is an aerial view of of, of the trees you know and we want this view to be varied so there are different trees and we just want the texture we, we don't want the whole image we just want the texture so you, again you want a big image you're going to copy this image and paste it in inside and just as we did with the grass once you scale it down to relatively logical size you're going to paste it 
and merge all of these layers and erase the lines. Once you erase the lines, we're going to do the same again. We're going to set to do a mask over the places that we can paint trees. So this is going to be everywhere except for the building. And we're going to draw, we're going to do a mask over the, over the group that we did on those trees. And since I don't want this to be this long, I'm going to release another episode next week. Process of putting the trees and adding all the colors. So, so stay tuned for the next episode and thank you guys for watching.